It's kind of weird seeing this guy without a pair of bird dogs and a shotgun slung over his shoulder. This is a good friend of mine, Eric Karish, who lives in northern Wisconsin and is one of the world's premier rough grouse and woodcock guides. And we both live in northern Wisconsin. We decided to do a show for you where most walleyes in the country are caught on small lakes. But we're not going to do the traditional slip bobber stuff and all that. We're going to show you some oddball techniques. Techniques that once you see them, you're going to go, oh, that would work on my lake. And it's going to be a different type of show. You're going to catch a lot of fish. Come with us and get your next bite. Smaller Wisconsin lakes are super cool because they're unique. Small doesn't mean simple either. He's getting a little bit lighter. I'll step around you and get the board off. There are a lot of ways to catch walleyes, depending on the time of year and what you have to work with as far as structure. Oh, there he is. He's not too big. He just came at it sideways. Black and gold again. Yeah. Hmm. Kind of liking that color. But Gary and Eric are looking to show that trolling... Little guys, real, real small ones. This one actually is... Probably 14 inches. A lot of lakes have gone to 15, although there's a lot of them that are, well, you can only keep one over 14 too. So every lake's a little different here. But. Has every bit of place amongst more traditional techniques like jigging. Nice eye. Oh, that's a good one. Up first on the docket though. He's on there. You got him. You angled him. Figuring out trolling and what it can entail. This is one of the few times that I've fished cranks on boards. We're fishing them so slow that you almost have to use tattle flakes because there's some small fish. A few key differences between angling and fishing are patience and deductive reasoning. A shaker. We have got the 10 inches down, buddy. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. So where are the big fish? But using experience and testing that against legwork, Maybe we need to let out about five feet. They're actually feeding, though. Those are the tools that shape a pattern. Way out in the depth. <laughs> Even if time, sometimes, is the only thing that can really help to start tell the story. He's a nicer fish. So there are some out here in the deeper water. A lot of little ones, but even some nicer ones. This is prime prime time too, right? You know, low light, so. Depths, speeds, and testing your best theories during times of day that are known for a little extra magic in the bite. I'm not feeling a whole lot of resistance here, but. He cleared it. The last one didn't give us anything till we got him to the side of the boat. Can sometimes help to bring the best parts of a plan to the surface, literally. I missed him. He is the right kind. That was a masterful net job. Still a little guy, but at the end here, end of the day here, we're starting to get into some fish out deep. I think we might come back in the morning, Eric, and try this early in the morning. I have a feeling some bigger fish are gonna bite then. Weather can be a wild card day to day. Beautiful day in the neighborhood, gentlemen. But also hour to hour, up here where storms move fast. A little bit different ball game than it was in the evening. We got pretty big undercells moving through. In fact, we have to watch if there's much more lightning. We'll probably make this a mid-morning start instead of early morning start. And thankfully, a nasty morning thunderstorm passes, leaving some wind behind it, which might be the tipping point on evening out the frequency of the trolling bite. It's kind of cool we're out here in the basin on a little lake like this. This, and this is a good fish. This one's nice and heavy. It's a pretty good one. To pop more consistently throughout the day. That's a good one. Holy man. Oh, it is Beauty. a Oh, that's a nice what fish. What a nice Eric. fish. Holy man. How far back was that one? I had that one at 60, so it was probably three feet above the bottom. You know, 
kind of staggering to top to bottom. That's a nice fish. There must be a little school of fish here because you got that, we got that little one out there and then right about the same time, boom, this guy hit. You know, this is such an overlooked situation, Eric, in northern Wisconsin lakes is these basins. Nobody fishes them, man. This is a gorgeous fish here. Wow. For a northern Wisconsin fish, this is about as good as it gets. That's a nice fish. Yep. I mean, you can get bigger ones than I would expect. We could get a bigger one anytime. But this is a good bread and butter fish, you know? I'll take them every day. Last night, when we were out here in this open water in the basin fishing, about the last hour of the day became like a magic time. All of a sudden, the small fish we were catching during the day turned into good-sized fish. And, you know, part of it is we probably figured out the patterns a little bit better. But northern Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan lakes, that last hour, that first hour of daylight is always a magic time. Well, the one thing that I think that we've seen here today with this lake is magic time might be all day long if you've got a lot of wind. When I troll the open basins of the big lakes, the Great Lakes, sometimes big winds mean that means that the bite goes downhill. But right now, we, we continued to fish out here. The wind really came up, and all of a sudden, those little fish turned into big ones again, just like that last hour of last night. So the moral of that story is, if you're fishing your lake and jigging and doing whatever you like to do, and it gets really windy and it's tough to control the boat, Pull up your gear, go out to the middle, put down the trolling lines. You may be surprised. Magic hour might be all day long. The next bite is presented by Mercury. Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Tracker boats, fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish.